Hey beloved, my name is Krista Pettiford. Welcome back to my channel. Today is day 12 of 12 days of Christmas for Vlogmas 2020. This is my first time doing this and I'm so excited I made it through. I hope that you are having a blessed Christmas and whenever you watch this, I just want to say God bless you and Merry Christmas to you. And I'm excited today because today I'm talking about your one word for the year. And the way that I've heard this taught has been so amazing by a friend of mine named Pam Farrell, who's also an author and a speaker. And But I want to talk about how the Lord gave it to me. And then I'm going to share my one word for the year so you can see how I broke it down and how I come to that conclusion. And then I'll share the tips that she gave to help you even take it further. So... Before I heard about this popular one word, I came to the conclusion of always setting a personal motto. And that motto, and that came from Psalm 119 verse 105, which tells us that God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our pathway. And a motto is a personal, uh, a personal motto is meant to be a light that guides, you, that guides your feet. And let me break down what the definition is. I'm reading from my book. That's why I'm looking down. A motto is a core value or principle concisely and consistently expressed that reinforces the concepts you already believe. It represents a fundamental belief that helps you that helps shape your behavior as you try to live up to the mission or the values that it represents. A personal motto is meant to be a phrase that you live your life around. And you can have a motto for a, for a lifetime. You can have a motto for a season, for a particular thing that you need to build into your life, to change your thinking, to change your mindset, to remind you of something, to build your life around the truth. And that's why I relate a motto to the Psalm uh, 119 verse 105, the word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our pathway. And a motto is the same thing. It's something that, it's, it's a light, it's a word that guides your feet and that you live your life around. And so with that being said, when I pick a motto for the year or a word for the year, um, I really try and reflect on what I need and what God is saying to me. But then there are times like this year that the Lord gives me a word. And this year he gave me the word, he gave me a scripture. So I haven't shared a lot, but I am moving to a condo. I am downsizing uh, my life and my living space. And it's going to be a nice space. And I'm excited to get to decorate and all of that. But it's been really, it's been fearful for me because I haven't lived in a condo. Um, I'm used to a bigger space. And um, it's just the transition of life and really taking place. Um, having sold the house I raised my kids in for over 20 something years and then downsized to a smaller home and now downsized into a condo um, for reasons I won't get into. It's just a decision that I made to just kind of downsize and minimize because believe it or not, I'm going to be 50. I'm going toward 50. And so I kind of want to downsize and minimize costs so I can look to the future. And so I'm an empty nester. And so I don't need all the space that I still had. Now, if I get remarried, well, it's a vision of mine and a dream of mine to be remarried. Um, uh, then that will come later. I wouldn't mind getting a bigger house or have grandkids or both. But anyway, that being said, it's really a scary transition. And I, um, the favor of God was all over this transaction. I had told the Lord that I didn't even care if I didn't find something, I would just stay in the apartment because I had sold my house back in March and I had been you know, kind of just waiting and looking for something. And then there's something came on the market. And I realized that the woman was Christian, the agent was Christian, and um, the, the transaction just flowed. And, but before that happened, I remember going to see the place and I said, well, I'll go see it. I noticed there's Christian art and maybe God is going to do something. But I hadn't even looked at properties in maybe two or three weeks. I was like, you know what, I'm over it. And I went to go see this property and um, the agent was there and he 
uh, and my agent called me the next day and uh, said, I think we might get it. They have to wait for other offers. I put my offer, my offer in. And so um, at that point when I realized I might get this place, because the market is crazy in Southern California, as it may be in your part of the world, I got afraid. I became scared. I, I felt fear like, oh my God, I'm really about to do this. Is this something I should be doing, God? Am I just pursuing what I want? Or because, you know, a couple of days ago I was fine and I felt like if you don't want me to have it, I'm going to let it go. And I you know, am I getting into something? So all of a sudden, all this fear and these thoughts and these doubts came and the Lord gave me Isaiah 41 and verse 10. And it says, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. And so my word for the year is fearless. But let me break down this word because this is what I did. I sat there on my bed that Sunday morning and this was just November 24th, 2020. I have it written in my journal. And um, actually it says, Lord, you spoke this scripture to me on Sunday morning, November 21st. So I had written this on November 24th. And it says, I will uphold you with my right hand of with my with my righteous right hand. So fear. Do not be afraid or frightened. And the word not means nothing. Do not be afraid of nothing. I am with you to accompany you. Be not dismayed. Do not be do not consider. Do not regard or have respect. Depart from it. Do not inspect it, look at it in amazement. So do not be as dismayed. Don't consider anything but what I said to you. I am with you to accompany you. Do not be afraid or dread anything. I am thy God, the supreme Elohim. I will strengthen you. I will give you courage. I will keep you steadfast in mind. I will establish you. I will increase you. I will fortify you. I will fortify you. I will cause you to prevail and be alert. Yea, also much more and furthermore. So this is me breaking down this scripture word for word. Uphold you. I will uphold you. I will sustain you. I will help you obtain, maintain, retain, stay, and I will follow close by you. I will help you. I will surround you. I will protect you. I will secure, assist, and keep you from distress in or hardship. And I will assist you in distress or hardship. My right hand, the strong and more dexterous, skilled hand. That is what the right hand is. With the right hand of my righteousness my righteousness, my prosperity, my equity, my justice, my moral and legal way and character. So this is what the Lord said to me. And so I broke down this word. I broke down the scripture verse, fear not for I am with you, be not dismayed. So I broke down these words. I am your God. I am the supreme Elohim, all these things, how he will strengthen me. And so if God gives you a scripture, and so out of all of this, my word is fearless because he told me, and I had to go get this verse. I was actually folding laundry and preparing. I don't even know if that was Christmas, Thanksgiving day. I can't remember what day it was, but I got this verse. No, he gave it to me on Sunday and I read it. So it was on a Sunday. I read it and, um, he spoke it to me and I had to go find it. I had to go search the verse and find out where it was because he just spoke the whole verse to me. And I'm like, that's Isaiah, Isaiah what? And so I looked it up, 4110, and I said, Lord, okay. And that was my green light to go forward with the transaction and the move and know that God is going to be with me, not just in moving to a smaller space and a new space, but also in everything that I am coming into in this new year that I am not to fear because God is with me. I am not to be dismayed. I'm not to consider, regard, or have respect to anything that would try and make me afraid I am because he is with me 
He is my God. He is the supreme Elohim. He will strengthen me. He will give me courage and keep me in steadfast in mind, establish and increase me, fortify me, and cause me to prevail and stay alert. He said, yes, I will help you. Yea, also, and much more. Furthermore, he will help me. He will uphold me, sustain me, uh, help me obtain, maintain, retain. And um, he will follow closely by me through everything that he brings me through. As I stay in obedience to his will and his word, then he's got me and he has ensured me of that. He will help me. He will surround me. He will protect me. He will assist me in any distresses or hardships that I come to with the right hand, with his stronger and more dexterous, skilled hand of his, his right hand of righteousness with his prosperity, his equity, his justice, his moral and legal ways and character. And so this is what God said he would do for me. And so that is my word. So what word has God given you? And what my friend Pam taught is that her word for the year, she takes it, she puts a verse, she picks a song, she picks a perfume, sometimes she does art. Um, what else does she do? I think there's seven things she gives herself. Um, I'll have to list them. I have them someplace. Um, she asks herself a question. So everything that she does is, am I being afraid? Am I being fearless in this? So she asks herself a question about it. So she makes a question that she can um, revert back to or refer back to and ask herself if she is being afraid or whatever her one word is. Is she living her life around it? And so she sets everything up to remind her. And so I will try and list those in the comments. Um, yeah, I'll try and find those. I have them somewhere. But if I don't, those are the ones that I remember. But I wanted to help you to see my one word, how picking a word, selecting your one word for the year helps you, whether you um, come up with it based on what you need or God gives it to you based on what he thinks you need. Whether it's a scripture verse and then you take that one scripture verse, like through all of that, I realize that my word is fearless. I have nothing to fear. Be not afraid. Um, God is with me. And so, and how that will carry you through everything. And when you find a corresponding scripture, even if God doesn't, if you don't start with the scripture, then you can find a corresponding scripture to help you focus on that word and get to, and really dig in and make that word yours throughout the year. So I know that God has given me this word and I'm going to cling to it. I'm going to focus my life around it. If I find myself being afraid or even confessing that, then I am going to remind myself that God has called me not to be afraid. To be afraid. He has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and a sound, a well-balanced mind. I could have picked that scripture, um, but God gave me a scripture and he gave me my word. And so I probably would not have picked selected that word for myself but God knew what I needed and he gave me the green light to go and told me he would be with me so I hope that I hope this blesses you and if you've never selected a word for the year I hope that you will take the steps to select a word and um, just cling to it whatever you need again it's like a motto the word of the Lord is a lamp unto your feet and a light to your pathway. And so whatever you need to light your path, whatever you're experiencing the most darkness, whatever, wherever you need to make the most progress, whatever it is, find that word that's going to carry you through and cling to it. Write it out. Re um, rehearse it. Memorize it. Meditate on it. Find one or more scriptures that remind you of it and meditate on those and rehearse and memorize those as well. And let that word carry you through. Don't do this haphazardly as a craft project or something fun, but really make it yours. Just like your vision. People do vision boards as entertainment and something fun to do. But vision, he said, without a vision, people perish. People give up. And so we are to write a vi write our vision and make it plain that those who run can read it. And so it is a vision helps us stay in the race. It helps us, like Jesus said, 
for the for the goal, for the prize that was set before him. He endured the cross, despising the shame because he saw the vision. He saw the goal and he kept his eyes on that. And so having a vision is important. Um, knowing what God called you to do, even, and let me just break that down. A calling doesn't have to be something specific, even though he does give us something. If you don't know, then you know what he said in this Bible about you. And that's a place to start. But having that calling, having a vision, Vision, knowing your purpose and your mission, which we all have those things blended together to be a light, to be a hope, to be a witness. Even if you don't know what your specific gift or role is yet, we all are called into the body of Christ to be um, uh, help people be reconciled unto the Lord, to be witnesses, like I said, all of that. And so there is a place for you and then having your systems in place and your goals in place. And having a word or a motto that guides you. So I hope these five days have helped you. God bless you. And see you on Sunday.